Hey everyone, I'm the Spudler, and welcome to my channel. I'm using a voice changer again today as it really helps me to get videos out at the moment. I am having some software and hardware problems here, so it is all just a little easier doing videos this way. Well, for a while at least. When it comes to voice changers, they seem to have trouble with the Welsh language. Don't we all? But I did find one that pronounces the words well, and so my Welsh AI friend Keris will be saying the hard stuff for me. Today, I thought that I would tell you a brief story of a Welsh railway station. Not any ordinary station, but one that you all may probably have heard about, but most are unable to say, including me. I am of course referring to the famous Welsh train station with the longest name. OK, maybe Keris needs to say that again, but slower this time. Thank you, Keris. The full name, consisting of 58 letters, is the longest place name in Europe and one of the longest in the world. The village and its station are located on the island of Anglesey in northwest Wales, and as with many places in the United Kingdom, a lot of the names of towns, villages, and even some cities have evolved out of the simple way folk before maps and road signs were able to describe locations. Portsmouth in England being one example, and its origins are pretty obvious. Rum's Bottom, on the other hand, well, how that place was named is anybody's guess. Here in Wales, a lot of place names are the Welsh descriptions of the landmarks and geography of these places. Aberystwyth, for example. Aber means estuary, and Aberystwyth therefore translates into the mouth of the river Istwyth, and suddenly the name makes sense. If you ever visit North Wales, you may well take a trip to Carnarvon. Castle. Carnarvon is a royal town, community and port in Gwynedd. In Welsh, a double D is pronounced like a TH. The town's name consists of three elements, Caer, Yn and Darvon. Just as a side note, in the Welsh language, there is no letter V. Instead, the letter F is said like a V, and the letters FF together are pronounced as an F. So if we break down the name, Caer means fortress. In this case, either the Roman fort of Sagontium, which lies on the outskirts of the modern town, or the Norman castle erected near the mouth of the Avon Seant. Arvon means opposite Morn. Morn is an ancient name for Anglesey. And the full name therefore means the fortress in the land opposite Anglesey. Once you understand the translations of these names, they take on a poetic and historical meaning which is so reflective of the history and beauty of the nation. The area now known globally as Sorry, I couldn't resist getting Keris to say that again. The village originally was simply called which means St. Mary's Church in the hollow of the White Hazel near a rapid whirlpool. And I love that. What a wonderful name. It conjures up so many images and makes me want to jump in my car and go find that whirlpool. However, when I researched further, I realised that the whirlpool referred to here may well be what was and still is by some known as the Swellies. Now I love words, and when I find a new one, I have to learn more about it. So briefly, the Swellies refers to a particular bit of water in the Menai Straits that separates the island from mainland Wales. Wikipedia states, It is notable for its difficulty in safely navigating its shoals and rocks due to the whirlpools and surges that are the result of the tides washing around the island of Anglesey at different speeds. There are several small islands in the Swellies, the largest of which are Church Island, Welsh, Innis de Cilio, and Innis Gorod Goch, Red Weir Island in English, but also known as White Bait Island. The Swellies are the most treacherous section of the Menai Strait, and before the bridges were built, when access to the Isle of Anglesey was only possible by boat, many a sailor would have sadly perished in these dangerous waters. So maybe I won't be visiting that whirlpool anytime soon. Anyway, it appears that this small village with a large name was known as for many centuries, until in the mid-1800s, it got a name change. In the 1860s, as part of a Victorian-era marketing effort to attract tourists and attention to the area, a local tailor is believed to have lengthened the name to its current form, which translates to 
St. Mary's Church in the Hollow of the White Hazel near the Rapid Whirlpool and the Church of St. Tecilio of the Red Cave. The name was chosen largely for its novelty and the promotional value it would bring to the town, especially following the arrival of the railway line in the mid-19th century. The train station itself opened in 1848 as part of the Chester and Hollyhead Railway, and the name change helped put the village on the map as a quirky attraction. Since then, Sorry, I just couldn't help myself. These days is often referred to as Lanfair Pool, or Lanfair PG for short. Or, if you want to impress your friends, Try saying Llan. And then Llanfair. And before you know it, you can say Llanfair Pool. Since the name change, Lanfair Pool has Sorry has become famous for its tongue-twisting name, attracting tourists who visit to take pictures with the station's sign. Despite the long name, the station remains a relatively small stop on the railway line. So, although when you know that the name that made this small Welsh town so popular is a relatively modern invention, it still has a poetry and beauty about it. Interestingly, Lanferpool station suffered catastrophic fires, before barely escaping permanent closure on several occasions. In fact, during the lockdowns of 2020, the station was forced to close for a while, as the platform was said to be too short to handle the extended carriages needed for social distancing. Happily, after lockdown, the station was able to reopen, and I suspect part of the reason for this is because of its extensive name. So, if you ever find yourself in Wales and want to visit this wonderful station, you can get there by car or by train. However, if you want to board a train at Lanfairpool Station, there is no ticketing provisions of any sort at the station, so tickets should be purchased in advance or from a guard on board the train. And trains from Lanfairpool operate two hourly services between Holyhead and Chester via Llandidno and Prestatyn. Typically, these trains continue to Shrewsbury. So if you ever find yourself in Wales, and especially if you are visiting North Wales, Take a trip to this world-renowned station and take a selfie for prosperity. And of course, you can also learn how to say the name from Karis and impress your family and friends by being able to say it correctly. Go on, Karis, just one more time. Thank you, Karis. Beautifully said. Well, this has brought me to the end of my short explanation of this wonderful name and its origins. I hope you found this story interesting and learnt a little about the ancient language of Wales. Please hit the like button if you did. And then, I know to do more videos about Wales, its history and eternal beauty. Thank you for watching and see you next time.